Excretory System The excretory system is a passive biological system that removes excess, unnecessary or dangerous materials from an organism so as to help maintain homeostasis or internal environmental balance within the organism and prevent damage to the body. It thus forms an important feature of the human anatomy. The excretory system includes mainly the urinary system. Besides the urinary system, there are some excretory organs and tissues like skin, lungs and liver. Skin plays a minimal role in the human excretory system. The skin secretes a fluid called sweat through the sweat glands located in the dermis which carries a small amount of metabolic wastes. The cells of the body also release toxic waste products such as ammonia which is converted into less toxic substances such as urea by the liver into the bloodstream. Single-celled organisms do not have any special excretory system as waste products formed in the body together with water are released through the general body surface into the surrounding medium. In case of multicellular organisms, since all the cells are not in direct contact with the outside medium, they cannot release waste products through the body surface. Thus they have a developed excretory system. Kidneys are the chief excretory organs of vertebrates, including mammals. They are important in maintaining the appropriate levels of water and iron concentration inside the body. Thus, they regulate the volume of blood and interstitial fluids. Kidneys remove wastes formed during the cellular metabolism as well as toxic and non-toxic materials from the body. Kidneys help to maintain the optimal pH of the body fluids required for the chemical reactions by maintaining an appropriate balance of hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. Let us understand the human urinary system. The urinary system of humans consists of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. Kidney is a dark red, bean-shaped structure. It measures about 10 cm in length, 5 cm in breadth and 9 cm in thickness. Each kidney weighs about 150 grams in adults. Both the kidneys lie in the upper posterior part of the abdominal cavity on either side of the vertebral column. The right kidney is slightly on the lower side because of the presence of the liver on the same side and it also remains partially protected by the 11th and 12th pairs of ribs. Since the kidneys lie behind the peritoneum of the abdominal cavity, they are said to be retroperitoneal organs. The kidney is intimately covered by a thin layer of fibrous tissue known as capsule. The outer surface of the kidneys is convex while the inner surface which faces the vertebral column is concave. A depression known as hilus is present on the concave side through which the ureters originate and join the urinary bladder backwardly. Also, the renal artery and renal vein enter and exit at the hilus. Internally, the kidney is distinguished in two zones, an outer dark red zone, cortex, and inner pale red zone, medulla. The ureter entering through the hilus expands to form a wide funnel-shaped structure called pelvis. The pelvis has a number of cup-like cavities at its free end. These cavities are known as calluses. 
In the medullary zone, 4 to 14 renal pyramids are present. The narrow apex of each pyramid is called papilla. The individual papilla is fitted into a small tube-like structure, calyx minor. Several minor calyces join to form one major calyx. A mass of cortical tissues known as column of pertony is present in between the two adjacent renal pyramids. It is also known as a renal column. Each kidney is made up of millions of functional units known as uriniferous tubules. Each uriniferous tubule is made up of a nephron and a collecting tubule. Uriniferous tubules are held together by a connective tissue. There are about 1.2 million uriniferous tubules in the human kidney. A nephron consists of a renal corpuscle and a renal tubule. The renal corpuscle, which is also known as Malpighian corpuscle or Marcello Malpighi, is a rounded structure consisting of a glomerulus and a Bowman's capsule or glomerule capsule. A glomerulus is a tuft of anastomosing blood capillaries and is invested by a cup-shaped structure, the Bowman's capsule. The blood enters the glomerulus through an afferent arteriole and leaves through an efferent arteriole. The inner wall of the glomerulus is lined by squamous epithelial cells or podocytes. A space is present between the two layers of the Bowman's capsule, the urinary space. The urinary space is continuous with the lumen of the renal tubule. The main function of the renal corpuscle is to produce an ultrafiltrate. It is a filtrate with all the gradients of plasma, except its proteins. The second part of the nephron, that is renal tubule, is divisible into three parts. Proximal convoluted tubule or PCT. Loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule or DCT. The proximal convoluted tubule or PCT arises from the Bowman's capsule and transverses within the cortex. Its initial part lies in the cortex and the terminal straight part, known as pars recta, descends into the medulla. The cells of the proximal convoluted tubule are large, columnar and bare brush borders on their apical surfaces. The major functions of these brush-bordered epithelial cells are to reabsorb large quantities of constituents of tubular fluid such as sodium, water, glucose, amino acids, etc. The loop of Henle begins as direct continuation of pars recta, the terminal part of BCT. It consists of a thin descending limb a loop and a thick ascending limb. The thin descending limb starts near the junction of the cortex and medulla. The epithelial cells of the descending limb are flat, squamous type, whereas the epithelial cells of the ascending limb are cuboidal. The distal convoluted tubule or DCT lies in the cortex of the kidney. At the junction of the cortex and medulla, the distal tubule lies very close to the renal corpuscle. Its terminal part is known as a connecting tubule with joints to the collecting duct. The collecting tubules of numerous nephrons join to form large tubules known as papillary ducts. Each papillary duct opens into a minor calyx at the apex of the renal papilla. A narrow muscular tube called the ureter comes down from each kidney. The uppermost dilated part of the ureter is known as renal pelvis. 
the ureters carry urine to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is a triangular muscular sac that collects and stores urine temporarily. It is situated in the middle of the pelvic cavity of the abdomen in the hypogastric region. The urinary bladder and ureters are lined by the transitional epithelium which can considerably stretch without getting torn when the bladder and the ureters are filled with urine. From the lower end of the urinary bladder arises a tube known as urethra. It is a membranous tube which conducts urine to the exterior. It has muscular urethral sphincters which remain closed except during the voiding of urine. Let us quickly understand the mechanism of micturition. It is the act of voiding urine according to the will of the person in suitable time and space. Parasympathetic stimulation causes the urge of voiding the urine. When the bladder gets full, the message is sent to the cerebral cortex via the spinal cord. The cerebral cortex gives the yes or no signal down. When the yes signal is sent by the brain, the spinal voluntary nerves relax the external urethral sphincter and cause the contraction of the pelvic floor muscles resulting in actual voiding of urine. The excretory system is thus responsible for the regulation of our body in terms of chemical balances, elimination of wastes and harmful substances and ultimately our good health.